very much. Uh, thank you very much. I, I would like to, to thank the Biennale and Paolo Barata uh, for offering us, uh, uh, all together with Aravena, the possibility of, year, of this year of bridging with Habitat uh, 3. Uh, it has never happened in the past, and this is an absolute novelty, and I would like to express my absolute gratitude for that, because I think that that adds uh, a very interesting uh, capital to the debate. I, of course, uh, will also like my friends Ricky Bardet, Richard Senets, Aske Sassen, and all the people of uh, Urban Age for bridging between Habitat 3, uh, UN Habitat, uh, the Biennale, uh, and making possible this, this complex uh, relationship that I hope it will produce uh, uh, interesting uh, ideas. And in that sense also, I would like to thank the uh, Alfred Herrhausen Foundation for providing the support for this uh, magnificent uh, occasion. Uh, well, I think that I don't need to, to speak too much about the, the case for urban planning, uh, but just to begin with, uh, let me uh, provide you with some ideas. Let's assume we are uh, working on the assumption that there's a, a million uh, human settlements in planet Earth, okay, just for your... Uh, because there has been different figures going around, if half a million, 700 million, uh, two million, no. Mm, we, are, we have decided that there's a million uh, 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 human settlements in planet Earth. Of this million, uh, in, in the population, the census population of, uh, of 2010, they were 4,231 cities of more than 100,000 population in the world. 4,200,031. From 1 million to 4,000. Okay? Those are the cities of over uh, 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 100,000 population in the census of 2010. Then in order to provide to Habitat 3 a little bit of uh, uh, um, facts and figures, and if possible, representative, uh, UN Habitat, we have team with the uh, NIU, uh, the University of New York, with a team of Slomo Angel, which is here in the table, that he published quite uh, some years ago the first uh, Atlas of Urban Extension, and he did uh, uh, this Atlas of Urban Extension in collaboration with the United Nations in a sample of uh, cities of this universe of, uh, of uh, the cities over 100,000. Uh, and uh, we have elaborated a renewed uh, sample of this uh, 4,200 uh, 4, cities, sorry, and this is the a sample of 200 cities. We have created a sample of 200 cities. This, two, this sample of 200 cities is available to all of you for research. Okay? Uh, if you write to UN Habitat, to the Global Urban Observatory, you can uh, use this sample and add layers of uh, information to everything that it's uh, done. This sample is stratified by regions, it is stratified by GDP, it has several stratifications in order to, to, to increase the, the, the representativity of the sample. Uh, the uh, cities of um, more than 100,000 population of the world, they represent 70% of the total urban population. That means that the, uh, between 4,000 and 1 million human settlements is the, 30, the, the next 30% of the urbanized population. Okay? We are going to elaborate also in the forthcoming years a sample for this 30%. Hmm? 
And also we are going to work on this sample and in order to make sure that this sample is uh, keeping its representativeness, we are going to provide uh, uh, improvements uh, whenever, whenever uh, are uh, needed. But for the first time, we are going to have uh, a more um, uh, objective information about what is happening in the world uh, about uh, urbanization. Because usually we take the most richest city, the most populated cities, we choose, the, we choose one city, uh, we choose another city. Here, no. Here we choose a sample of cities and then we try to find out what is going on. And what is going on is not very nice, hmm? as you can imagine. For example, we have done a subsample of 30 cities of this uh, sample and we have compa compared the evolution of urban planning in the last 100 years, 115 years. And what we are seeing is that... Uh, there's no... Oh. Yeah, you see here. The... No, sorry. Yeah. The part of the planning uh, of urban uh, expansions is diminishing. Contrary to what would seem uh, normal, what is happening is that the use of urban planning uh, at the beginning of uh, 19th century, every city extension was planned. Most of it was planned. Now, at the beginning of the 21th century, you see that the planet part of the city is less than 50%. And what is emerging is the informally planned or the totally unplanned uh, urbanization. Then, urban planning and design, contrary to what the common sense will say, is going backwards. Why? Probably the explanation for that is because the urban expansions, the, the growth of urbanization is so fast that the governments, they, they don't have the capacity to anticipate and to plan in advance. Then the actual uh, reality is that the share of urban expansions which are planned is diminishing. Another bad news, the, the reserve, the, the, the amount of land allocated to the street grid is diminishing. At the beginning of the 20th century, it was 25% of the land, average of the 200 cities, which doesn't mean that it's the optimal. The optimal, you know, it's something like 30% but the average was 25, and now the average has diminished to 20, 21%. Then we are advancing with technology, with, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, wisdom, uh, I, um, uh, tech, everything, and the amount of land allocation, common land, common space, the commons, allocated to the mobility is diminishing, not increasing, diminishing. Well, the land use per capita, we, we have put here the 200 cities, the, every bar is one of the 200 cities. The distribution of the land uh, consumption or use per capita, it's very dramatic, from nearly uh, 10 meters per capita to 1,000 meters per capita. Huh? Uh, that means that you can urbanize in very different typologies, huh? planet or unplanet. But what is happening is the, that the use of land to uh, urbanization is growing more rapidly than the urban population. The urban population is exploding, you know that. 
that we are nearly going to double the urban population in the next 35 years or 50 years, reaching something like 7 billion urban population from the current 3.8 million. But what is happening is that the urban consumption of this urbanization, it's growing, if the population is growing 100%, uh, the urban land consumption is growing 350%. Why is that? Well, you can mm, probably, you can, mm, you know, you can take your own explanations for, for what is uh, going, w why that is happening. But it's a, a, it's a very important, it's a very important feature of a problem of the urbanization is like the two previous slides, a proof that urban planning is retroceding instead of in adv in advancing. And this is representative of the planet urbanization. This is not just uh, figures from five uh, cities or 20 cities. Another thing that will interest very much is Saskia. I, I, Saskia, are you here? Yeah, look, look at that. Look at this figure. The size of the urban plots are growing as never has happened in past urbanization history. Another proof of poor urban planning. Now we are reaching an average, world average plot size in urban areas of 5.3 hectares. When usually, you know, in Barcelona, for example, the average plot is 250 meters. Now, and look what has happened in the last 20 years, if you compare the blue with the, with the green. And that has to do with the ownership, with the ownership of the land. Eh? The, the owners, the new corporate owners, they like big plots, which is against proper urbanization. Because if you have hectares, uh, sorry, 5.3 hectares of average plots, who is going to invest here? The small investor or the investment, urban investment, is going to be concentrated in big investors, corporate investors. Again, this is representative of all the cities of more than 100,000 inhabitants in the planet Earth. A very interesting uh, thing that we have found. We have divided the urban, the housing uh, typology on, uh, on uh, four categories. Informal housing, slums, uh, which is the first, uh, I don't know, blue color. The second, which is red, is public housing. The third, which is green, is private multi-property housing, condominiums or uh, buildings with uh, flats, and, and the last purple line is uh, single families. And we have divided the cities in, in four categories of GDP per capita. Less than $3,000 per capita, uh, between three and uh, 8000 between 8000 and 20000 and more than 20000 Of course, if you look at uh, slums or, or Informal housing, you see that informal housing is 25 of the housing in the cities of less than 3,000 3, dollars per capita and is nearly zero in over 20,000 per, uh, per, uh, per capita. But uh, look at what is happening in, in single housing. Single housing, it's very common in very poor 
countries because of the tradition and the linkage with the land, the people wants to touch the land, that they don't, socially and culturally, they cannot imagine to live a pilot together in a multi-store building. Then we see the condominium on the multi-store building climbing and reaching its highest between 8,000 and 200,000, 20,000, sorry, and then a little bit of decline and the huge promotion of single housing again, over $20,000 per capita. Another pathology of urbanization which uh, is not uh, sustainable. Then I have been asked to defend, uh, just one minute more, to defend the, the why urban planning and design is needed. I'm just going to talk about economy, uh, to provoke uh, you that all of you are, uh, you know, progressive and, and left-lined uh, people. I'm going to talk only about money, hmm? to offend you. Uh? Then, uh, most of the urbanization is going to happen in the developing world. I repeat, most of the urbanization, most, I mean 98% of the urbanization is going to happen in the developing world. And in the developing world, the countries of the developing world, they are less than $3,000 per capita. And they need development. Then we need to convince them that it's very important that they do urbanization for a purpose, which is related to their objective, and this is development. And the uh, uh, reasons to do urban planning that probably you don't consider usually is first to generate economies of agglomeration and second to generate economies of agglomeration, which are fundamental for the growth of the poor countries where most of the urbanization is going to happen. But in order that uh, this uh, happens, they need to uh, focus. They need to take uh, uh, resolute uh, actions in relation to urban planning. And I think that this is what uh, we need to bring to Habitat 3. How can we move the countries and governments of the developing countries to do proper urban planning when the world is not doing it. This is the big challenge of Habitat 3. Thank you.